I want to welcome you to this service online. My name is Pastor Matt from Lord of Life Church, and I'm so thankful that you have tuned in to worship with us during this pandemic. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's from Psalm 46, and we will focus today on that particular psalm. It's a powerful psalm about God's abiding presence during times of turmoil and calamity. We'll also confess our sins and receive the forgiveness of God. We'll sing to the Lord. We'll unite our hearts in prayer. We'll confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. And we'll receive a blessing at the end. Here are a few announcements as we get started. First, we would love to pray for you according to your specific needs. We invite you to go to our website, lolchurch.net forward slash prayer. And then complete the prayer request form, and we will pray for you specifically this week. I also want to let you know that we have a benevolence fund to help people specifically during times like this. If you need financial assistance, paying a bill, we would love to help you out. The Lord teaches us to help and care for those in need. So let us know. Go to our website, click on the emergency assistance button, complete the form, and we will do our best to help you. And finally, I invite you to give to the Lord, to bless his holy name, to test your faith during the pandemic, and to say thanks to God for giving you and me his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Your gifts reach people for the Lord so that they will know his abiding love and his abiding presence. I invite you to visit our website, lolchurch.net, and then click on Give. You'll be prompted to give a gift to the Lord, either a one-time gift or a recurring gift. And if you prefer to give by mail, you can mail your gift to the church at P.O. Box 251, Wasco, Illinois, 60183. And finally, there's an easy and convenient way for you to give by text. Simply text this number, 630-381-1199. Type the word give and you'll be prompted to give either a one-time or a recurring gift to the church. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your generosity that moves forward God's mission to connect people with Jesus and each other. Now, let's praise our God who has conquered the grave. Pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. Punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. We are healed by your sacrifice and the life that you gave. We are healed. He was crushed for our sins The punishment that brought us peace Was upon Him By His wounds By His wounds we are healed We are healed by Your sacrifice In the life Transgressions, he was crushed for our sins. 
Before we pray, I want to give you a brief personal update. Our daughter, Elin Joy, she turned seven months old on October 20th. She was born the day Illinois went into lockdown. And we had family pictures taken, and she does quite well in front of a camera. Here's a photo of her and her brothers. And here's a photo of our family. And I want to say a big thank you to you for your love and your support. During this time, your prayers mean the world to us. And I want you to know that we pray for you. We pray that the Lord would give you strength and encouragement during this difficult time. And that you would know God's love and his grace and his mercy given in Jesus Christ. Let's now join our hearts in prayer. Thank you, God, for the blessings you've given us. Even during times of hardship, calamity, and turmoil, you give us serenity to trust in you to have peace in you. Lord, we thank you for the promise of Psalm 46 that you are with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Thank you, Lord, for being an ever-present help in trouble. We thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus to us when we were in trouble, when our sin separated us from you. You took action and you sent the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the whole world. And for this, we are forever grateful. Lord, we pray that we would receive Jesus anew, that we would receive your grace, your compassion, and that we would walk according to the truth. Lord, we thank you that you raised him from the dead, and now there is life forever in his name. We pray, Lord, for our world, that you would heal our world of COVID-19. We pray, Lord, for our country, that we would be united during this time of division, during this election season. And we pray, Lord, that you would be glorified in everything that we do. We thank you so much for loving us. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. We now confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now hear the word of the Lord. The first reading is Psalm 46, and this is a powerful psalm about God's abiding presence during times of calamity and turmoil. God is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. 
The second reading is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning at verse 35. And this is when Jesus calms the storm. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for Psalm 46. Lord, we pray that you would guide our thoughts and our minds and our hearts as we hear this message and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'm going to preach on Psalm 46. It's one of the most familiar psalms in the Bible, and it has one of the most familiar verses in the Bible. That's verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. By watching this service, you are making time to be still and to know that he is God. In last week's message, Brian, he introduced us to an app called the One Minute Pause. And it's a complimentary app from the book written by John Eldridge called Get Your Life Back. And I actually downloaded it and I was quite impressed. It helped me to be still and to know that he is God. Here's a screenshot when you go to the app store. It's called the One Minute Pause. And I want to share with you the first one minute video. It talks about having unity with Jesus. Here, take a look at this. Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. I give everyone and everything to you, God. I give myself to you, Jesus, for union with you. I am created for union with you, God. I give everything in me for union with you, Lord. I need more of you, God. Fill me with more of you. That's good. That's enough for now. That's a powerful short pause for you to be still and to know that he is God. If you download the app, you can choose when the pauses happen, morning or afternoon or both. I invite you to be still and to know that he is God. As I'm preaching to you right now, there is so much worry, so much unrest and uncertainty in our world. You can feel it in the air from the election season that we're in. Also to COVID-19 that has spread all over the world. And there are new restrictions even in our own county that were just enforced last week. Well, if all of this isn't enough, there's also news from one of our mission partners, Pastor Hanuk, floods in India. He wrote this last week, giving us an update. We support Pastor Hanuk as a missionary. This is what he wrote. We trust the Lord to keep you all well and safe. Please pray. There has been floods in Hyderabad. Presently, cyclone and floods in Hyderabad. Water came in many houses. Roads cut off. Cars floating down aside the roads. 
Never happened in the history of Hyderabad. Water came in our church cellar. We are pumping the water out. Please pray for us. So that's what's going on in our world. You can feel it. You can feel the tension. Many people are stoked by fear. Many people are troubled and filled with anxiety. And where do we turn in a time like this? Here's where we turn. Psalm 46 tells us where to turn. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. In the face of utter destruction, the writers, the sons of Korah, they express a quiet confidence in God. As you read this psalm, which you heard read earlier, it sounds like world destruction. Mountains are falling into the heart of the sea. There are wars. There is water foaming and raging. There's all kinds of destruction. Scripture tells us that the world as we know it will end someday. That Jesus will return and he will usher in a new heaven and a new earth. So we can face the future without being succumbed to fear, without being consumed by anxiety. We can face the future with a confidence in God because he is our ever-present help in trouble, even in our current troubles today. I love what the great preacher from Great Britain, Charles Spurgeon, said about this psalm. Psalm 46 is the song of holy confidence. What I love about this psalm is that God never promises to eliminate for us the trouble in our world as we know it. Yes, one day he will when Jesus comes back, but there is suffering in the Christian life. Here's what we learn from this psalm is that God doesn't eliminate the trouble, but he is your fortress in the trouble. Much like this castle. Talk about a fortress. A mighty fortress is our God. And he is with you. And that's what this psalm is about. He is a refuge and strength. An ever-present help in trouble. There really is no other place to turn for help. Our world is consumed by sin. But God in his great love for us, he is our ever-present help. And Jesus came to us to give us the greatest help that we need to remove the barriers so that we can have union with God. Jesus, over and over in Scripture, he never glossed over the trouble. He identified it, but he said that he would help us and that he would be with us through the trouble. He said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest for your soul. Jesus acknowledges that there are times when we are weary and burdened. He acknowledges that there's trouble in the world, but he promises to help us. He is our ever-present help in trouble. As I said earlier, the sons of Korah wrote this psalm, and they wrote a number of psalms in the Bible. They wrote this one about 3,000 years ago, during the time of King David. They assisted King David in arranging music for worship in the temple. In the introduction to this psalm, which is part of scripture, many people think, oh, I'll just gloss over it. It's actually part of what the sons of Korah wrote in their psalms, so don't just gloss over the first part. For the director of music of the sons of Korah, according to Alamoth, a song, Well, Alamoth, if you parse the Hebrew word, it means hidden things. And throughout this psalm, we have God hidden in the three sections. In each of the sections, we learn about the trouble, and it feels overwhelming. And then the sons of Korah interweave God's presence, his help within the trouble. The earth give way, the mountains fall, waters roar and foam, mountains quake, nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, the earth melts, wars, desolations, spears, shield, and bow. And then, 
in the very first section, look what the authors begin with. They say, rather than focus our attention on a world that's unraveling, look here, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. The next section teaches us how God gives serenity during the trouble. Mountains quake, but look, God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. And God will help you at break of day. Just when we need it most, he did help us. And he promises to help us even today. And look in this third section. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Then there's wars, desolations, spears, shield, and bow. And then the author tells us to not be consumed by the fear and anxiety. Instead, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. These are things that can seem so hidden. The things that God does for us today, like that little powerful word from Scripture that redirects our thoughts to trust in God rather than listening to the voice of the enemy. Or that little nugget of grace as we remember the cross of Jesus Christ in a world filled with sin. Or how about Jesus himself? He arrived in our world as a baby who had no place to rest his head. Mary and Joseph, they found an inn and he was born in a stable and he was laid to rest as a little baby there in a feeding trough. The Son of God, the Savior of the whole world, alive, right there, hidden in a dark, dark world that had no room for him. God, he is hidden in our world filled with pandemic, unrest, racial divisions, all kinds of problems that we're seeing today. But as we turn to him, we will notice that he has revealed himself to us in powerful ways. Ways that give us peace. That teach us to be still and to trust in him. Because he is active. He is alive. And he cares for you. Peter said, cast all your anxieties on him. Because he cares for you. I love what Jesus said about God's hidden things that the world doesn't understand it. He said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. He has revealed them to us, his children. Thanks be to God for his hidden gifts. See, God is your serenity power and salvation in times of trouble. What is serenity? Well, it is the state of being calm, peaceful, and untroubled. The words be still are memorable in this psalm because the world described in this psalm is clearly not still. Jesus, he said these words, be still, and it was a powerful experience of his love for his disciples and for us. You heard it read earlier in Mark chapter 4. It was a stormy night with Jesus and nothing was still. Just as Psalm 46 says, the waters roar and foam. Well, that's what was happening for the disciples and Christ who was in the stern. The waters roared and foam and the disciples learned that they couldn't contain the water that was coming into the boat and they couldn't calm the storm. Things looked dreary. And what was Jesus doing? Well, he was in a state of serenity, complete peace and calm, asleep in the stern of this boat. So they went to Jesus and they said, Jesus, don't you care? And Jesus got up. He rebuked the wind and the waves. And he said, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. He's still awake, and this makes all the difference in the world because he cares for you. The disciples asked Jesus, don't you care? Yes, he cares so much that he died for you to save you from the greatest storms of life. Sin, death, and the devil are defeated. 
Jesus was in the stern with the disciples, and he's with you now. Jesus said, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So you have the Son of God with you. You have God himself on your side to call upon his name, to help you in your time of trouble, because he is an ever-present help in trouble. Not just in the past, but he is ever-present with you now. I love this from Psalm 46. The sons of Korah repeat it twice just so that we will know it with confidence. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. So this week, stop and be still. Notice the hidden things God has done for you to sustain and preserve your life. The twist in this is that God uses you today to deliver serenity during trouble. You are the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And he works through his church to deliver confidence to people who are in trouble, who are struggling, who are stuck. And God uses you to deliver his promises, which are always true and certain. I love what happened a few years ago. One of the leaders in our church, Larry Zagorski, he leads our alert ministry, our early response team. And this team goes out and helps people after a natural disaster strikes, and they help to clean up the mess. Larry, one day, he presented here at Lord of Life, and he gave an update during worship about the latest things that God has done in alert ministry. And afterwards, he had an experience where he was able to help someone and to provide peace, and that God worked through him to give serenity to someone who was really struggling. Larry sent me an email about it, and I want to read it to you because it's a powerful testimony about the impact you can make on someone's life. Larry wrote, Hi, Pastor Matt. I wanted to share with you an experience I had Sunday morning after church. Again, this was years ago. I had a very nice and positive response about Lert, which kept me at church longer than I usually stay. After I left, another couple stopped me out in the sidewalk with some questions about Lert. As I turned to leave, a car pulled up and a gentleman got out of the car, his eyes watering. He asked if I would pray for him. He was a Uber driver on his way to work. He had a bad experience and was scared to work today but needed the money. As he was driving by, he said he was drawn to pull into our parking lot and thought if anybody was out in front of the church, he would stop and have that person pray for him. If no one was there, he would drive on. I feel blessed that I was the one out there. After I prayed over him, he said that his day would be easier, gave me a hug, and drove off. I thank God that he put me out there at that exact moment. God works in mysterious ways, but sometimes he seems to just make it so obvious. God bless. Larry. Powerful story, isn't it? God does work in mysterious ways, but sometimes he makes it obvious. So what are some obvious ways that you can help bring serenity to people in your life? Well, the first one is to pray for them. Prayer is a powerful way of turning trouble into triumph. When we give it to God, as Brian said last week, our troubles begin to shrink and our view of God gets bigger. I was at the men's retreat a few years ago and I noticed this quote. And it's a powerful quote. Only God can turn a mess into a message, a test into a testimony a trial into a triumph, and a victim into a victory. Amen to that. So pray for them. Prayer, God works through prayer, and he is moved by prayer, and so are we. Another way to deliver serenity during trouble is to confront the storm. Jesus, he confronted the storm. He didn't ignore it. And we all know that trouble brews in relationships. So what are you to do about it? Well, in Christian love, he would want you to be still, to turn to him, to ask for his help, 
and then to go to that person for which there is a grudge and then to address it. But first be still and listen as you speak. Trust in God and he has the power to bring reconciliation and forgiveness. Martin Luther is a great example of confronting the storm out of love. He's one of the most influential Christians in history. He confronted a storm, a big storm. In his day, he faced a church that was going the wrong direction, forcing people to buy forgiveness from priests. He read the scripture and he brought change by nailing 95 theses to a church door in Wittenberg, Germany, and later defending what he wrote. This Saturday is Reformation Day. He defended the truth that we are saved by grace, through faith, alone, in Christ alone. That scripture alone and not the Pope is the standard authority for all matters of faith. He was forced to defend what he wrote before the king. And he was condemned by an angry church. He sparked the reformation of the church and he brought such divine disruption which gave birth to Protestant churches like ours today. Martin Luther was so strengthened by Psalm 46 that he wrote and composed a hymn that paraphrases Psalm 46. Maybe you've heard it before. A mighty fortress is our God. And it's been called the battle hymn of the Reformation. Here are just a few words from that hymn. A mighty fortress is our God. A sword and shield victorious. He breaks the cruel oppressor's rod and wins salvation glorious. God's word forever shall abide. No thanks to foes who fear it. For God himself fights by our side with weapons of the spirit. Were they to take our house, goods, honor, child or spouse, though life be wrenched away, they cannot win the day. The kingdom's ours forever. Powerful words, aren't they? Your God is a mighty fortress, and he will always be. There's a set of posters and t-shirts that are very trendy today. The original poster was produced by the British government in 1939 in preparation of World War II. They created a phrase to build the morale of the public as there were threats of wild airstrikes against major cities. Well, the first phrase has continued on in popularity, and things have been added to it. Maybe you've seen the original phrase, keep calm and carry on. There's the British crown. I like this one. Keep calm. Jesus lives on. And this one is based on Psalm 46. Keep calm and know that I am God. I invite you to take time this week to be still and to know that he is God. If you believe that God is your ever-present help in trouble, would you say these words with me from verse 1? God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. To wrap up today, Jesus has overcome the world. Be still and know that he is God. And to that we say, Amen. Good morning and thank you for joining us. You know, Psalm 46 has always been very meaningful to me, uh, especially during several of my own major life events. And one notable experience occurred back on September 11th, 2001. I'm sure you're familiar with it. That's when the two planes crashed into the tower in New York. And I was at work at uh, the time, but I quickly decided that instead I needed to be home with the wife and family. On the way home, I passed near Emanuel Lutheran Church in Batavia, and I decided to stop by and pray there. And I found Pastor Ron Weidler in a small group already praying. And as Pastor motioned me forward uh, to join them, they began reciting Psalm 46. Well, that short walk up to the front was, was really amazing in my mind. It's something I still remember uh, because 
it gave me such a comfort. I remember it composed my soul and uh, gave me a fresh outlook on my surroundings. And I continued my journey home later with a much firmer step that day. So let us pray. On this day, in the season of the Protestant Reformation, which began in 81517, Lord, we give you thanks for your servant Martin Luther, who opened our eyes to salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And this is all based on Galatians chapter 221, which revealed, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if it if righteousness could be gained through the law, then Christ died for nothing. We offer prayers of thanks to you for revealing to us the true perspective of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives today. We humbly and willingly submit ourselves to our Savior. Yes, Lord, fall is in the air with all its wonderful colors. We offer prayers of thanks for all that you provide acknowledging this beautiful display just as a small sample of your power over the universe. Yet we wonder about the recent rise in COVID-19 infestations, and we pray for your help in dealing with yet another set of rules, more disruptions in our lives, more physical hardships, and yes, continuing financial hardships and emotional hardships as well. Help us to remember that you alone are our refuge and our strength, and we pray that we will simply trust in you. Jesus, we offer prayers for all those who have been stricken. We ask for perseverance for the providers, comfort for the families, and a sense of purpose for the caregivers. If it be your will, we ask for healing for the afflicted and peace for those who will soon be with you. Also, peace for the loved ones who are left behind. We will not fear. Though the earth give way, for you are there, we pray for your mercies during these trials of ours. And Father God, we pray for our schools and for our children. May you continue to be with our schools and our teachers as they wrestle with changing landscape and as they struggle to implement good educational plans. May we remember God's abiding presence through calamities. And it's a powerful force. It must be acknowledged and followed. And may we pray constantly for your guidance. We also pray that you will enrich our child's journey through these times so that they are not only enriched by the experience, but that they also come to know you better. We offer a prayer of safety for our children. Thank you, Lord, for your love for your presence in our lives. We know that the Lord Almighty is with us and that the God of Jacob is undoubtedly our fortress. Amen. Thank you, Bob. We are all blessed by the work of the great reformers of the 16th century, like Martin Luther, Philip Melanchthon, and John Huss. They defended the word of God they rediscovered God's grace. And when the word of God was under attack, they boldly stood up for the truth. They believed, just as scripture teaches, that we are saved by grace through faith, not by our own works. They also believed the importance that scripture teaches about confession, confessing our sins to the Lord. Martin Luther, he wrote several prayers of confession. And for us now, we'll take time to confess our sins to the Lord using the words of Martin Luther's prayer of confession. Would you please join me? Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen.
As I mentioned in my sermon, Martin Luther wrote a hymn called The Mighty Fortress Is Our God. And it's based on Psalm 46. And it's a reminder that in this dark world filled with trouble and sin, that God is our fortress, that he is our ever-present help in trouble. And when we needed help the most, he came through for us by sending his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to take the punishment we deserved upon himself, to take upon himself the sin of the whole world and to give us the forgiveness of Almighty God. Through Jesus Christ, we know God's love and we are blessed forever and ever. God loves you. And hear this good news that by God's grace, all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now sing to the Lord. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And he sends us out with his blessing, out into the world. So receive this blessing from the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.